John Adams was born on October 30, 1735, in the North Precinct of Braintree, Massachusetts, which is now known as Quincy. His parents were John Adams Sr., who was a successful farmer and a selectman in the town of Braintree. He was also a lieutenant in the militia. His mother, Susanna Boylston, was a socialite, or someone who attends social activities and spends a large amount of time being entertained. In 1751, at the age of 16, Adams went to Harvard College in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He was ranked 14th in a class of 24, but his rank didn't indicate his academic standings, but rather his social position. After graduating in 1755, he became a school teacher in Worcester. This is when he made the decision to become a lawyer. He studied law with James Putnam, who was a lawyer in Worcester, and he was also a Harvard graduate. Adam's role in politics began with opposition to British laws and taxes in the colonies, such as the Stamp Act of 1765. His oppositional work gained him respect and political stature, and Massachusetts sent him to the First Continental Congress in 1774, along with the Second Continental Congress from 1775 to 1777. Adams was also appointed to a committee to draft the Declaration of Independence, along with Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Robert R. Livingston, and Roger Sherman. In the presidential election of 1789, the first presidential election in the United States, George Washington won, and Adams became the first vice president. Adams' main task was to preside over the Senate. Adams' popularity began to lessen in the first year of Washington's administration, when Adams became highly involved in a controversial matter of the president's official title. Because of Adams' refusal to let his ideas go, along with his being overweight, he earned the mean-spirited nickname of his rotundity. John Adams was the candidate of the Federalist Party in the election of 1796, along with Governor Thomas Pinckney of South Carolina. They were running against Democratic Republicans Thomas Jefferson of Virginia and Aaron Burr of New York. Most of the Federalists would have liked to see Hamilton as their candidate over Adams, but Adams had had more experience being Vice President. Adams won the election and Thomas Jefferson the second most electoral votes and was elected as the Vice President. With Jefferson being Adams' Vice President, it created problems because Jefferson was from the Democratic Republican Party, whereas Adams was a Federalist. Jefferson used his position as Vice President to attack President Adams and make all of his proposals and policies seem inferior, to help himself reach the White House in the following election. These attacks by Jefferson caused Adams to lose even more support from the Federalists. John Adams knew he had to protect Washington's policy of staying out of the French and British War when he entered office. Before Adams took office, the Jay Treaty had been created to avoid war with Great Britain and it improved ties between the United States and Britain, which in turn angered the French because they helped Americans gain independence from Britain and it violated the French-American alliance thus causing the French to begin seizing American merchant ships that were trading with the British. This became known as the Quasi War, or the Franco-American War. This was an undeclared war fought almost entirely at sea. Adams sent Charles Coatsworth Pinckney, John Marshall, and Eldridge Gerry to France in an attempt to negotiate peace with French to end the Franco-American War. The American men met with three French agents who were referred to as X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z demanded that the United States loan the French $12 million, pay a $250,000 bribe to Charles Maurice de Talleyrand, the French foreign minister. The French also wanted a formal apology because of comments made by Adams. The Americans responded to these outrageous demands with the now common quote of not a sixpence, and the slogan, millions for defense but not one cent for tribute, became popular. In January of 1799, Adams sent more negotiators to France, and the Treaty of Mortefontaine was eventually put into place, ending the hostilities. The time it took to negotiate a resolution to the XYZ affair was far too long. The entire affair was an embarrassment to John Adams and lost him even more support from the Federalist Party. In response to the XYZ affair, the Alien and Sedition Acts were passed in 1798. These acts were four bills to protect the United States from alien citizens of enemy powers, such as the French. Because of the XYZ affair, the Federalists believed that French agents were everywhere plotting to overthrow the government. The three alien acts raised the residency requirements for American citizenship from five years to fourteen, and allowed the President to deport or jail any alien considered undesirable. The Sedition Act set fines and jail terms for anyone trying to hinder the operation of the government 
or expressing false, scandalous, and malicious statements against the government. These Alien and Sedition Acts were unconstitutional and defied the First Amendment and the American Bill of Rights, the right to free speech, and also the Tenth Amendment. The Alien and Sedition Acts were highly opposed by the public and the Democratic Republicans. These acts also gave cause for the Federalist Party to distrust Adams even more. The Alien and Sedition Acts ultimately gave the Federalist Party a bad name and led to their demise. But the true collapse of the Federalist Party began when President Washington died. The party lost the man that symbolized and united them. It was impossible for Adams to fill these shoes. When Adams took office, he was instantly faced with problems with Jay's Treaty, which led to the XYZ Affair and then in turn the Alien and Sedition Acts. All of these issues and flaws in Adams' presidency lost the trust of the Federalist Party and made his presidency appear as a failure. This allowed for the Democratic Republicans to take control of the nation after the election of 1800.